Jumping from your mobile phone, TV or PC I'm on whatever screen you own Jumping from tabs to apps, I suggest you don't I promise you'll miss out <laughs> On information that is vital What I do is feature guests, I'm even call them the best So I'm going viral with idols, it's so classic Like a set of CDs and vinyls You already know it's time for my show right. We want to send a shout out to all our first time viewers and returning supporters locally and worldwide. If you've been rocking with us so far and would love to become a supporter of Quarantine and Rap, peep the link in the description of this video or head over to anchor.fm forward slash it's Ray Pearson forward slash support and you can make a monthly donation of either 99 cents, $4.99 or $9.99. So salute in advance for that. And with that being said, What's good, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Quarantine and Rap. I go by the name of Ray Pearson. I go by the name of Jomi Lowe's. And man, no oh man, we got we got a special one tonight. Oh, uh, Jomi put me on to him. I was like, I bet I'm gonna listen to some Savage. I did not do such a thing. Yo, hold on, yo. I did not realize that. Samad Savage has collabed with Lou Gone. When I realized who it was, I was like, wait, well, well, wait a minute. I've been listening. So, you know what I mean? Like, yo, Samad Savage, welcome to Quarantine and Rap. Hey, thank you very much for welcoming me. School with it. How y'all doing? All is well, all is well. Um, I'm happy to see you. Thank you. Same here. Um, damn, we gotta find a button like to, to fucking cue the the the, the applause. Like I told you this. I told we needed a bomb button. Yeah, no, yeah. Gosh. No, we're gonna we're gonna work on that. <laughs> we're gonna work on that one. Um, but Samad Savage, although I said your name, let everybody know where you're from. Uh I am from Montclair, New Jersey, uh repping Jersey to the fullest, repping the East Coast to the fullest. Everywhere I go, almost every track, I'm always trying to put on for Jersey. Yeah. Right. And um, who who are some of your influences? Um Shoot, in, in what genre? Oh, I mean, whoever inspired you to whoever inspires your creativity. Uh God. <laughs> For the Amen moment. to that. Yeah. Preach. All right, that's what's up. And um, like, what was the song or artist that you heard that made you want to pursue music? Uh, I've always been a really musical person. Uh, my mom never really had a filter for me, so I always was listening to like DMX, Tupac, Eminem, like as a baby. So um, I think I just said like I love listening to rap so much in general that I was like, you know, let me just try writing something real quick. I don't think there was a specific song or person or anything. It's just hip hop as a whole. I was like, mm. I love it so much. I, let me try it. Word. That, I mean, that's a that's a dope lineup of artists. Hey. Um, like, where do you find your inspiration? Um, and honestly, across across all genres, uh, is where I find my inspiration. I, I don't know how else to <laughs> say that. No, no, you it's all good. Do you ever find it? You ever find it difficult finding inspiration with today's sound of music? Uh, not at all. There's definitely stuff to take from today's sound of music. Uh, a lot of people look at hip hop as just one thing, uh, mm -hmm. but hip hop has kind of grown into several different things. And hip hop, as far as compared to other genres, is still a very young genre. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's ever changing. And I think that everybody has something to offer. I, I've learned things from Lupe Fiasco and learned things from Pop Smoke. I've learned things from j cole and learn things from little baby so it's it's you just got to pick what you pick and choose what you want to uh, take from what you hear word and um who would you say is um who's in samad savage's playlist right now right right now uh, i've been listening to uh nle chopper uh a bit because he uh he's he's very versatile like a lot of people know him for his, his trap stuff but if you get into his albums it's just a different array of sounds and I find it so intriguing that somebody who blew up doing doing what he did could have like those other pockets, and I just find that inspirational. He he young, I think he like eighteen. Mm. Nice, that's that's dope. That's super dope. Word and um, being someone and correct me if I'm wrong when I say this, 
being someone that not only raps but produces mm-hmm. and getting more into the the videos um like what pushed you to go into that direction um into the directions of production yeah like a like a jack of all trades oh oh um pretty much i was too broke to buy all of the things that i wanted so i said let me learn it <laughs> so, nice yeah, in times of uh google and youtube I just looked up everything I needed to learn how to do. Mm, and what's the, what's the di- more like, what's one of the most difficult things that you have to go through, like while juggling all of that? Um, Time management. Time management is my most difficult thing. Uh, I am late to most things and I, I have to figure that out. A lot of times when I'm late to something is because like my studio is at my home. I could be working in the middle of a record and then something comes up. I lose track of time and then I'm like trying to finish it up and it's just uh, a mess because <laughs> mm. it's not like uh, I just record a song and then that's it. And then I have to send it out. It's like I record a song and I'm like, this sounds good, but I can't Im- I can already imagine how it's going to sound with this mix. So then I. Right throw it into my mixing DAW and then master it. I got to hear how, like, I don't even record, like, one verses. Mm. Like, the song, the rest of the song could be empty. I don't do any of that without, like, pretty much mixing and mastering the whole thing. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a lot. And between, like, um, between um, mixing your songs as opposed to video editing, like, what's the longer process for you? Video editing. Um, it's, it's the reason I don't I don't particularly love video editing. Editing. I just love the results and uh, the reward of doing it. But uh, yeah, video editing is is too time consuming for me. Um, and music itself is time consuming, but video editing takes it to another level. Yeah, video editing is definitely something that's very 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 time consuming Mm -hmm. not only that when when like when you're on a low budget you become the editor and the audio engineer on top of that so then now you have to kind of like make sure everything is kind of like in sync with each other make sure you got those b shots it's it's a lot editing i've done it and i don't want to do it again (laughs) so i understand um, so wait, what what happened with your um your 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 concerts in Montclair? I remember you had a concert in Montclair, and it was like uh, you had a couple seasons. Oh, uh, Best of Essex. Yes, that's what it was. It wasn't really a concert for me. It was more so like a, a networking thing where a bunch of artists would uh, well not a bunch, twenty artists would pay five dollars to perform, and whoever had the best uh performance, crowd decides through cheers gets a hundred dollars and it's pretty much like betting on yourself you know um and i I just thought that would be really helpful for making people work on their craft making people be competitive yet still be friendly it was it was such a beautiful thing it was just like family down there so uh i would love to bring it back but you know we live in the middle of a panini so yeah (laughs) (laughs) until next year word word that would be so dope even if you bring it back virtually you should definitely bring it back because it was a lot but there was a lot of dope artists on there i I want to but it would be so different it's one of those things where you kind of just have to be there to truly appreciate it there's some people who've gone live like going on instagram live to show people what's going on and whatnot and like it looks cool and whatnot but it's it's not the same as just being in there feeling the energy, see our artists come off the stage and be able to just like walk up to them and, you know, type. Some people don't even know how to connect through typing, even in times like this, because they're used to like feeling somebody's energy before they even get to read their words, you know? So I I don't want to deprive anybody of that. I want to do it the right way if if I do it again. Absolutely. I definitely understand. But that was definitely like something to, to check out and to, um, you know, outside is opening up just a little bit. Yep. Yep. So when it does let's not let's not be Texas now though. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um I wanna you mentioned Jersey um in the beginning and, and putting on for Jersey every chance you get. Um 
before before I get into the topic of Jersey, mm-hmm. as an independent artist, how does it make you feel knowing some of maybe your favorite industry slash mainstream artists are scammy independent artists um, from rappers to DJs to entertainers? I, I don't feel any kind of way about it. This is going to sound really harsh. But I feel like uh, in order to be able to be successful in this industry, you have to, one way or another, you have to get scammed once in order to learn how to not get scammed. Mm. And I felt like that was a learning experience for a lot of different artists, uh, especially because it's like, like at, at least it was on the internet and their screenshots and stuff like that. And they did what they said, but just not in the way you thought. So I think you're talking about like the mixtape thing where like somebody was like, yo, I want you to hop on this mixtape and da, da, da. And then the artist is nowhere to be found on the mixtape and they share it once for like an hour. And then that's it. So a lot of people feel scammed, but it's like, right. if you read the contract of submitting your music to that, you would see what the artist was obligated to do. And Very true. that's something that you, that you just got to learn. And, and, you know, not only that, but I, no, well, I'm gonna leave it there. I'm gonna leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> Word. I mean, I I know how I know what that feels like to get scammed. Mm-hmm. I definitely know what it feels like. It's not a good feeling, but you know the best the best part about falling down du- falling down is being able to get up. Yep. Exactly. Learn from ah. learn from your experience and you know move accordingly after that. I just think Absolutely. they're lucky. It's not like the early two thousands where artists and, and DJs were doing this without online. Facts. Mm-hmm. Nice then the mixtape actually never drops. You never hear from anything. The artist actually never shares it in any kind of way. Right. And you really sitting there with absolutely nothing, not even a screenshot. So um, I think people just need to toughen up. We in soft times, you know? Very true. Yeah. I like the way you said that. People need to toughen up. We in soft times. Mm-hmm. I need a t-shirt with that on me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so serious. Mm-hmm. Um, but... No, go ahead, Jimmy. No, Lali, I'm waiting for you. Oh, <laughs> um, Samad, I'm, I'm, I I'm, want to get into um, Good Night. That, that is the name of your song, right? Just, all right. Yeah. So an hour before you released Good Night, you posted a message for all your supporters that included that you don't have a label or manager, mm-hmm. that you're the... I'm saying this word right. The epitome. Am I saying it right? Oh, the the epitome. The epitome. epitome. My bad. The epitome of being a. No, I have like this horrible artist. Yep, I read that. I have this horrible rapper's handwriting sometimes, and it's like, the hell did I write? Um, so you're the epitome of being an independent artist, and I definitely agree to what um this next line is. You want to remind the industry that the people are in control. Mm-hmm. Do you feel that the independents are the new majors? No, not at all. And I'm, I don't. The words that I use wasn't to uh, have my stance be I am pro independent and anti label slash anti industry, mm-hmm. but it was more like reminding people that it was it was a people empowerment post. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So I want to remind everyone, including me, all of us, that every click that we you know, give up every like that we give up, every comment that we do is our power. That's, it's it's worth money. You know what I'm saying? So um, be careful where you put your money. Like a lot of, I, I didn't want to aim it at other artists, but what I, what I was trying to say behind that is instead of giving these artists attention through even hatred by saying like, yo, look at this clown, do this and da, da, da. Why even do that? You, you have power with every view and every like and, and all of that. So give it to, I might not even be the right person, but give it to the right person. Word. And um, why is Good Night such an important song to you from the audio to the video? Um, At first, it wasn't that important, but it grew to be extremely important because of what it means to so many different people. Um, And I know that audio in the beginning is also what makes it kind of important to me uh, because it was a conversation that I was having with my friend. I was just really in a deep, dark rut. And he gave me that whole speech. Like if, either you're going to let life beat you or you're going to get up and keep fighting back. And that motivated that first verse. In fact, I released that 
song like a, like a year and a half ago with just one verse, no mm-hmm. hook, no second verse. And people liked it, but I was like, you know what? Let me finish this song. And people end up loving it way more than I could have ever expected. So I'm just, I feel very blessed. And tackling those, um, like them feelings that you have. Um, do you ever feel that sometimes it over, like it takes over to where it blocks your train of thought? I'm sorry. Could you could you ask that question again? Like you know, feeling like when you're when you're in a when you're when you're in a rut, mm-hmm. do you ever feel like dumb moments where it's like you know I can't I can't shake this off and it's like it's taking over too much. Um. Huh. I, it does get overwhelming, but I know that greatness comes out of every bad thing that I go through. I've been through mm. so much in my lifetime that in my short lifetime <laughs> that I just know that it's going to come out into greatness on the other end. Like some of the songs that I made about my deepest, darkest stuff have helped so many people get through what they're going through currently. And that right there makes everything, I'll go through everything that I went through again, <laughs> if it meant to give people that feeling. So yeah, it, it don't really, it stressed me out. It becomes overwhelming, but it don't stop me. And would you say that, you know, is that something that you were you were going for? Well, not that you were going for, but like what was what was the thought process going into the gray area album? Uh I was extremely depressed. <laughs> and I just put all of my feelings out into the world and, and talked about childhood traumas and stuff like that. And it turned out to be a really good album and I really enjoy that album. Some songs are hard to listen to now because mm. I'm past that, but right. just knowing what it meant to everyone, it's worth it. Word. And um, like how long, like when it, when it comes to something so personal, especially the gray out, the gray area, how long does, did it take you to actually work on that body of work? Um, I think that definitely took about like two years. Um, it took two years to come out, but if we're talking about time I actually spent working on the album day by day, probably took me a good like two to three months. Most of my albums take a good like two months. Mm-hmm. Trust the weird kids. Why? Why? Why trust the weird kids? Yeah, I mean, I know I was the weird kid, but why? Why the title? Uh, I chose that title because I felt like, um, oh, I, I'll tell you exactly why. I did an interview with uh, Urban Outfitters after I had got like. Not a music deal, but I had a sponsorship deal with them. Yeah, and I saw that. Thank you. And, and <laughs> they they uh asked a specific question about advice that I could give. And for some reason, I said, trust the weird kids. This is before I even knew I was going to drop the album. It was at least like four years prior to the album. And that just stuck with me. It, the whole quote was, trust the weird kid. He's on to something. And that's, I guess, what I would have told everyone about me if I knew who I would be today and that's also what I would have told myself like yo stay weird stay who you are because it's going to pay off one day so yeah that's what's behind that word because I I definitely definitely um like that that saying trust the weird kids um now I remember you from when you like started you had everything in your backpack we had a block party Mm -hmm. you came um, I remember, I forget, I believe her name was Jersey Rave, gave, uh, contacted you through Facebook. Yeah. And she asked me, she was like, can we have this kid come to the block party? Can-? And I'm like, dude, this is just something small, nothing too big or crazy and stuff like that. She was like, no, we need to have him. We need to have him. And then when you came and I was like, oh shit, you're here. <laughs> and I remember you, um, you just came regular kid with your backpack, just real chill, real nonchalant. Um, but that was, I know that was the first day I, I met you and I was like, yo, this kid is going to be great. And you are going to be great. Like I, I'm actually, every time I'm in your presence, I'm like, this kid is going to be great. And I tell you this all the time. Every time I see you, I'm like, dude, you're going places. And I, I appreciate that. Those words are, are greatly needed. Cause I'm sure, you know, as an artist, the mind of an artist, it's very easy to doubt yourself. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's oh very, yeah. It definitely is. It definitely is. But 
You know what I mean? Like that's just a part of your story. That's just a part of any chapter that you write um, for your story. It's, you know, being able to feel that. And see, I'm always the type of, I'm the type of person I try to always find the positive in the negative. Mm -hmm. Like this wouldn't be happening if there wasn't a positive outcome. I got scammed, but there's a reason why I got scammed. It's not because I was blind to the fact it was because something's going to come from this that I'm going to be able to, to like my statue is going to chip this off. So it's, it's definitely one of them things where it's like, that's just a part of your story and how you, how you manage to deal with that for that chapter and the chapters that come after that is just, it's just what's, it's just what makes people want to tune into what you have to say even more. Uh, I know, I know it's an interview for me and you're asking me questions, but Ray, you mind if I ask you a question? Shoot your shot. You play video games at all? I do. Okay. So here's a concept that I've been thinking about for a really long time. Mm. Isn't getting to the boss level or beating the game the best experience when you have the most XP experience points? Right. Um, Nine times out of ten, it's not as fulfilling if like you beat the game and you didn't do any of the any of the side quests, you didn't get any kind of experience, you didn't follow the story or anything like that, you just skip to the end. That's boring. Another right. analogy I use is like life is life is a movie. I'm sure you guys heard a million rappers say that before. But my thing is life is a movie. Don't walk out before the ending. And I'm sure y'all understand what walking out means. So oh, yeah. I feel like we just got to see it through to the end and we have to cherish every single experience because it just, it adds on to the great video game ending. <laughs> you know? mm-hmm. Yeah. Like why start a race at, why start a race already finished? If you don't know what it's like running the track, mm-hmm. like no lie. When you mentioned a video game and that whole theory, it just made me, it reminded me of Mortal Kombat too. Mm. When I was, when I finally like, beat the game after so many attempts it's like you you know why start all the way at the top you wouldn't know what is gonna you don't know what it takes to actually get there so when you work you know your ass off to finally like reach that level was like yo like i did it Mm. one of of my favorite quotes are are you are you uh running to win the race or are you running to run the race Mm. that had me stuck because i'm like dang (laughs) <laughs> it's the truth but let me ask you something how do you feel now like um from when you started now that like people are actually talking about you bro like um to what three days ago um uh what you gonna call it uh what's his name no life shack was talking about you you saw that right yeah 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 he has 40 forty nine thousand views yep Yep. Yep. I like, and they they are talking about you. How do you feel about that? Like, how how does it make you? How does it make Samad feel? Um. Hmm. I, I want to tell you two things. Uh, the No Life Shack reaction meant a lot to me because I personally love No Life Shack's content. I am a big yeah. fan of his work. I think it takes true talent to react to things in the style that he does it and he's just the best at what he does so that meant a lot to me to this that's like me hearing uh funk funk master flex repeat my record you know what i'm saying just things that i've been watching other people get for a long time it just meant a lot to me in that way as far as uh people talking about me um i don't know it's it just this is going to sound like really weird but i'm and kind of like a holeish, but I'm kind of getting used to that, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I just am. Wor- I, I, I've been working on my life to get to get to a certain point, and I'm still not there. But I know what's going to come with getting to that certain point. So I've been mentally preparing myself for certain things. So since I've started this, I'm like, yo, I wanted, I want to become extremely popularized and be a household name with my music. So the more that that happens, the more I'm just like, yes, achieving that goal. Instead of being like, I never thought this would happen. It's like, nah, this is this is one of my goals. <laughs> so yeah, that's how it makes me feel. Good, good. Yeah, that's I'm dope, man. That. That's dope. And salute to No Life Shack. No, I I love watching um like his reaction videos. Yeah, because not only are they hilarious, but sometimes too, 
um a lot of these reaction videos they they break down some of these lines that i be missing so it's like yo he's that word a heartbreaker for sure yeah mm-hmm. no, definitely um samad i have a question for you all right so leading up to the question beyonce said in an interview people don't make albums anymore they put out quick songs until it burns out then they do it again nipsey rest in peace nipsey hustle nipsey said on 105.1 you can be a singles artist or an album artist or you can find the balance in both do you feel more of a band do you feel more of a balanced artist or do you focus on creating a body of work body of works is my heart and that's probably just because of the way that I, I consume music. Um, I listen to albums. I don't like listening to singles. Uh, one of the best quotes I've ever heard from Logic, he said, uh, releasing a single before the album is done is like releasing a trailer to a movie that's not finished. <laughs> and I still continue to release the single before the album is done. But um, yeah, I'm, a, I'm, an, album, I'm an album artist. I love that. I can't stand when people actually my, my wife, uh, she doesn't listen to albums. She listens to albums on shuffle, which like is <laughs> me out. Like, how, do you, how do you do that? You're not hearing it how it was meant to be heard. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um Yeah, no, like like how does like I'm pretty sure it's not that I'm pretty sure you know a lot of artists. Yeah. So, how do you how do you how does it make you feel like do you ever cringe when you realize that one of them is uploading every week or two without strategic planning depends on how good the content is some people build for that some people not mm. and um all right i mean that's a that's a that's a great way to answer it i mean i've seen i've seen artists because my thing is when I see someone doing that and I'm in no position to ever just like chime in, but my fear, like my cringe is like, well, did they register it with ASCAP or BMI? Is it copywritten? Mm. Like, did they, re- like, did they do, you know, BDS? Is it on radio tracker? Like, that's my thing. Cause it's like, it happens so often. Mm. Well, I mean, what you're talking about though is a, a lot of times. Oh, sorry. Hold on. <laughs> Forgot to pay the bills again. <laughs> nah, um, <laughs> should be on any second now. Uh, there it goes. Okay, so what I was saying is, um, a lot of the time, artists just take whatever beat off of YouTube, and their purpose of it is to give y'all White Castle sliders, like just put some out, put some out. They're not worried about that. They didn't even get the music to copyright it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and we're also in a time of the internet where it's very easy to prove if somebody stole your song. Mm. So it's like, I don't want to say copyright don't matter. Of course, copyright your stuff and all that. But um, it's not at, on our minds, as on like young artists' minds as much. Do you ever feel like, do you ever feel like you, you want to ever just like hit any of them up and be like, look, man, I know you're talented, but if you just change this about yourself, you won't get screwed. I I don't do that unless I'm I'm actually friends with somebody because I I learned that the hard way. Um, there's this artist, uh, a Doja Cat. You guys know Doja Cat, right? Yeah. So about like two or three years ago, it was before the the uh, cow song. Um, she had said if she had dropped the track and I was like, dang, this is really tough. But I said like, yo, if you don't mind, like I would love to produce for you. Cause I feel like the beat could, could have been better. I was trying to be helpful as a fan of her work. Mm. And she came in the DMS and long story short, she tried to tear me up, but it didn't really bother me. Cause I can tell why she felt that way. Like she felt hurt that I was judging something that she worked on. I didn't know that she produced it. And also, who am I? I'm just a kid on the internet. You know what I'm saying? So uh, since that instance, it's just like, you may have the best intentions when trying to talk to the artist you look up to, but they don't, um, they they won't always reciprocate it that way. If, if, if I don't 
if I don't know somebody and they come up to me saying like, yo, I like your music, but because sometimes it's bad advice. One person said like, yo, I feel like your music will blow up if you just dye your hair. What? Yeah, no. Yeah, I'm listening to them. <laughs> they had the best intentions of saying like, yo, I just want you to blow up, do anything at this point to blow up. But I'm obviously going to take that as, man, screw you. You don't know nothing, you know? So, yeah, no. Like, Jomi knows the type of artist I am. And I literally had someone that's known me since what, maybe 15, tell me, yo, what you need to do is water your music down to a Gucci main level. Mm. But then meanwhile, you're bumping seven tribes. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, once again, it depends on your goals. You know what I'm saying? If I wanted to just blow up and be famous and not care about the longevity of my career, there's so many songs I could have just made. <laughs> and and dropped and released i know this i know the strategy i know what most likely will work you know if god wills it to work it'll work but nah I'm, I'm definitely just trying to do something that's more uh potent you know what i'm saying something that's just gonna last stick around music that make people feel because not many people making that anymore you know nice. that's the body that's the body of work mm-hmm. so i saw you in this popping cypher on the 25th of april yeah. Tell me about that. How how the hell did you end up on there? Um, so it it wasn't by an accident. What what happened was uh <laughs> there's this huge artist slash YouTuber, uh KSI. He has like mm-hmm. like nearly 30 million subscribers. Mm-hmm. Um and he what did he do? He he dropped a, a challenge and was like, yo, whoever got the best verse can end up on the uh remix on my album. And there was 13 artists who tr- who, who uh, made it to the top. He ended up, pick- he said he was going to pick 10, but there was just so many good people. He was like, yo, 13. And I was the last, last person because I submitted it last because I felt like ah, I'm not even going to win, whatever. I-, I might as well not even do it. And thank God I did it because uh, he had, it was so late that he had me at the end of the video. Mm. Like, like he was reacting to a bunch of them and then just put it as an extra at the end of the video (laughs) but anyhow um it was a voting process um and although i was really good in my verse and whatnot uh my boy crip was also really really good and he had a way stronger following so uh he ended he ended up winning but god bless his soul because if i won i wouldn't i wouldn't have been able to do this since he has such a huge platform he decided to take the 13 artists or the 12 other artists that didn't win and to do a cipher with those 12 other artists, including me. And it just, it blew up. Yo, 2.3 million views. Wow. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Yep. But you've been on a few cyphers. Like, how much of a fan of cyphers are you? I love it because it's just like, it's like, hmm, it's like rap Olympics. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's, it's like, it's like the, the playoffs, you know? So I just love going in and trying to tear somebody's not anybody specific but trying to tear everybody's head off you know so that's just it's super fun uh it's just so hip-hop no matter what the beat is it's just it's just such a hip-hop concept that i just i love it my heart is there but uh i probably got one more left in me (laughs) nah man i still got cyphers when you was on rejects like three four years ago yeah i I remember that clip i remember that clip Mm mm-hmm Every um, time he came in, he was just ending it. <laughs> and then Knox Hill was talking about you too. He, I mean, well, Knoxville, uh, Knox Hill versus Samaj Savage in, in, in the end game. Yeah. How did you feel about that? Uh, that was extremely fun. It, right, right before uh, he had booked me to do that, right? And I was like, I was with it, everything was perfect. And then, boom. He said like a really I'm not trying to bring this up to like throw dirt on him. That's my boy now. But he said uh, a insensitive line about uh, Ahmaud Aubrey. Well, it was like it was kind of a Meek Mill situation where it was a punchline. He didn't say any, he, did, he wasn't trying to hurt anybody's feelings or anything like that. But he didn't really think about how those words coming from a white man could be taken oh. and it mm. ate him up for it for a bit. So. I, I asked like, yo, why why you do that? You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't publicly try to shame him because I'm not with the cancel culture. I just DM'd him privately since I had him, you know, had his attention. And he had like, yo, what, what's going on? And he said like, he do- he didn't know he was thinking. That wasn't his intentions. He like prior to that dropped a song about Black Lives Matter in a positive, supportive way. He didn't think people would take it that way. And he was apologetic. 
and I said like, yo, I, and he said like, yo, it's okay if you don't want to do the uh, the versus thing anymore. And I was like, you know what? No, I'm gonna do it, but we have to we have to repurpose it. We can rap and stuff at the beginning, but by the end of it, I need you to tell your fans who may that you may have some white fans, you may have some conservative fans, you may have some you know, you may have those certain kinds of fans. I need you to tell them how we can make a difference and talk about the black struggle in a supportive way on that too. And he said, like, most definitely he was with it. So that's, that's what that was about. I just wanted to turn something that was a negative. Negative into positive. Yep. Do you ever, do you ever feel like, um, whether it's, um, ciphers or battles, do you feel like, you know, there is a cutoff as far as, some of the the punches that that are thrown uh oh like uh you're talking about like a limit in beef no not not a limit in beef but like mentioning um maybe current or past events because that's one thing about me like oh. i'll throw on a punch that's like jaw dropping but it's not with done it's not done with ill intention it's just uh it's just the situation that that it be it that you know it's a cipher it depends on where they're at in their career and it depends on the line. So like that Kobe line that, that uh, Meek Mill said, uh, it was a bad line, but if it was said by, I don't know, like Arsenal in a battle rap, mm. everybody would have went crazy. Like, Oh, that's the hottest thing I ever heard because Arsenal is known for being disrespectful. It's right. a different kind of world being in a battle rap league and uh Arsenal's not in a play in a place of his career where he's trying to clean up his image. While Meek Mill is in a place in his career where he's trying to, you know, repurpose his image. He's also doing the whole uh reform thing with Jay-Z. And it just seemed like a really bad look for somebody who's doing so many other things and knowing he's in so many circles that can, you know, keep up that good image. Word. I mean, I mean, I understand. Um Sometimes, you know, like I I might write something down as like, nah, I don't think I should do that. Mm. Um, but yeah, no, I, I totally, I totally understand. I, I dig. Um being a being a ciphers, right? Mm. Even like collabing, like how do you go into how do you go into a collab? Do you go into a different zone? It depends on the song, on what the song brings out of me, you know. Like if if y'all listen to my albums, y'all hear I'm a very, I, well, at least I try to be a very versatile artist. So anytime that I hear something, I don't think like how would Samaj Savage approach this? I just feel like I let myself go and flow into whatever they're doing. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> and um, for, um, going into a cipher and knowing who's a part of the cipher, like maybe uh, Lou Gon, Vin J, Futuristic. Like when you when you know who's going into a cipher, do you do you ever feel like yo, like I definitely I definitely gotta push my pen? Like they can't get the best of me. Well, when I do ciphers, I understand it's a presentation of myself to the world. Um, so most of the time I just think like, how can I let people know who I am or what I'm going through and whatnot and make that sound the dopest way? Cause that's the that's the only way you go. You can impress people with punchlines, speed rapping and all of that, unless you're actually talking about something you believe in that they can feel. And that you truly feel it's not going to connect right, you know? That's the reason why Jay-Z, like everybody says Eminem had the better verse on, on Renegade, and I'm a huge Eminem fan. I put Eminem above Jay in my top. Mm -hmm. But I think Jay-Z had the better verse for what he was talking about. Right. I, think it, I, I guess as far as Renegade, I guess it all comes down to preference. Yeah, that too. Yeah. But when I was growing up, M definitely was my favorite on that. It just it changed with my perception and maturity. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I mean, I'm a, I'm a big M fan as well, so I, I understand 100 percent where you're coming from. Yeah. Even even like, do, all right, so collab whether it's collabing, um, going into ciphers, do you keep that that competitiveness? Like, is it? Do you always? Do you ever see it as friendly competition? Um. Yeah, I'm from Jersey. <laughs> no. yeah that's we have it's a it's a very you know it's funny a lot of people 
say that Jersey artists don't know how to connect and build and we should be more like Atlanta and stuff. I feel like the younger generation is absolutely great at that and we're doing a great job. But one thing that we learned from the, the prior generation is that we have that competitiveness still. We, instead of being like, yo, screw that dude, I'm better than him. It's more like, yo, he's nice, but I'm gonna get better than him. Or he's nice, but but like I'm nice too. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a different kind of energy. So that's what I carry with myself. That's how I present myself rapping with anybody mm-hmm. or especially rapping. Let me ask you something. Where do you, how do you see like the future of hip hop now with your generation? Um, I feel like uh, so that's a very tricky question because I feel like hip hop is uh, a certain kind of music. Well, mm-hmm. rap is a different kind of music and there's something new that's happening right now that just maybe doesn't have a name yet or every name that's given to it is a negative name you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. like they'll say 21 savage is a mumble rapper 21 savage has never mumbled his entire career you can hear every single thing that he says so why would you call his music that they may call it soundcloud rap but soundcloud is just a platform that you upload music to so how mm-hmm. is that a valid description so yeah, I think once uh once we they figure out the right name for it, the future of that is going to be great. The future of hip hop is going to be great, and the future of rap is going to be great. Just different. Do you feel like hip hop hip hop is shifting right now? Like going from one like you know how hip hop usually shifts like every five years, you'll you'll see like well I mean gangster it, rap and went for trap and then you know so forth and so forth. Pop shifts. Hip hop never shifts. So, so you mean to tell me that it didn't change from the golden era to the gangster rap to, because um, these are these are literally subgenres within hip hop, literally. Did Rock did Rock him disappear when Gangsta Rap came? No, he was nah. in the albums. He mm-hmm. was not popular. Mm-hmm. So what's popular is shifting. That's saying that's just uh, culture in in general. No matter mm-hmm. where we're at. Uh, culture in general continuously changes into many different things, but hip hop is is hip hop. And the reason I say that is because what's popularized right now is the baby and the triplet flow and the 808 based beat. And Eminem is still dropping albums that is hip hop. Mm-hmm. Yasko is still dropping albums that's hip hop. Uh, Kendrick hasn't dropped in a minute, but his last album was predominantly hip hop sound. Hip hop. Mm-hmm. And A. Cole, hip hop. So I don't think hip hop changed. Hip hop is still there. It's just pop, whatever's popular. Is mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I guess, I, I guess people, I mean, a lot of people take the pop music as, uh, I guess they give it its own image mm-hmm. and sound mm-hmm. when is it's exactly what you said it's, it's popular music but for some reason they think pop music as like you know who's holding the flag or maybe a Justin Timberlake or or at the time maybe a Britney Spears so i think you know like people have to people have to get that definition out of their head i mean we talk we talk about this so much in hip hop but i mean think about it with any other genre right um Rock went from like jazz and blues kind of inspired sounds to uh like the Beatles and then to like like punk rock and then like they sort of added a bunch of synths and 808 drums in in, in the 80s and then rock became super grungy and then mm-hmm. like but although these are different eras of rock rock is still rock it has rock. when it comes to pop music although well Actually, pop completely changed. Pop is pretty much rap now. But <laughs> but um, if we're talking about the history of pop, want to be starting something by Michael Jackson to Thank You Next by Ariana Grande. Completely changed. Mm-hmm. And nobody's talking about it because we're just enjoying music. I feel like hip hop is the only genre where we're so critical on every single thing that comes out. It's like, let's enjoy life and make music and enjoy music and understand different music is going to uh you know gravitate towards different people keep evolving yeah yeah because you know i i just said that because you know hip-hop definitely has his 
its historical time periods. Mm -hmm. And I feel like hip hop is going into a more conscious rap type of season Mm -hmm. type of thing. Like, I feel like I see more conscious rappers, um, independent artists um, coming into fruition, especially like now for Mm -hmm. some reason. And so that's why I definitely asked that question. Mm -hmm. I I appreciate you asking uh, both of you guys for asking all these questions because <laughs> these are things that need to be opened up for discussion, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. You know, this is definitely um, a platform for independent artists, creators, you know, to get more of an understanding of, you know, someone's journey and their, you know, what, what runs through their mind so that it's not one-sided so, you know, like these are discussions that should be happening instead of the um the gap that hasn't been bridged. Facts. So um New Jersey. First off, and when I when I'm when I'm tapping into this New Jersey hip hop, I'm not speaking about the platform, although I have put up a post recently about New Jersey hip hop, the, the platform. And I felt, you know, I'm from the Bronx, but Jersey has a lot of bragging rights as far as I'm like when it comes to me as well. Cause when I started rapping, I started, I was living in Jersey City. Mm. Um, so when I, even one of my videos um, for Team Backpack, the, the audition, mm. I said from the Bronx to Hudson County. So it's like, you know, Jersey will always be mentioned in that rep. One like you know, after I say Bronx, to Hudson County, New Jersey. Um, for New Jersey hip hop, I feel like that is definitely a platform that should be elevated even more. Um, because you know, a lot of people when it comes to like hip hop, a lot of people like to you know, high 97, power 105, but I feel New Jersey hip hop is definitely something that people, artists should be taking advantage of to get on. Um, Do you feel that there is a lack of platforms in Jersey for artists? Uh, No. Uh, I don't feel like that at all. I feel like there's a lot of them. Um, And the more we break the barrier of, uh, you know, bias and uh, choosing things over relationships and whatnot, um, the more credibility Jersey media will have. Big facts. I think that's all I got on that one. <laughs> yeah, big facts. It's the truth because a lot of a lot of things came from Jersey. It's just you know the media. The media is what con- is what's been controlling shedding that light on to New York. You know what I mean? Actually, and uh, I feel... In, in the, I'm sorry to interrupt, but factually, like, in the higher-ups of the industry, yeah. New York has actually devised plans to keep New Jersey artists out of the industry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I got love for New York, and the one, my, my only issue with New York is New York's issue with Jersey. You know what I'm saying? Like, if, if they could just grow to understand that regardless of where we're from it's still it's still one coast mm. i think that would just go a lot further and once again like with the younger generation though we're breaking that barrier i I'm, I work with a lot of new york artists so it's it's all it's all love now it's a new time big do facts you, do you have any favorite platforms well not that do you have any favorite platforms in jersey to not you know to you know, not give credit to another platform. Um, but what are some of the platforms in Jersey like you've always been so um up to performing for? Um, definitely New Jersey hip hop. Um, definitely, yeah. <laughs> definitely uh nonfiction radio. Um what else? Shout out to Ray, yeah. nonfiction radio. Shout out. Um, although their page just got deleted, there was a page called uh, uh, New Jersey Artists that was just really killing the game, and hopefully they get back up. But um, yeah, there's uh, also uh, what is what is the name of this page? There's just there's so many different pages. 
that's the reason why I said I don't think there's not uh I don't think that there's too little I think there's a, just plenty <laughs> it's hard to remember yeah there's there's definitely is a lot of platforms in Jersey no it's just gonna get me don't bad for me forgetting <laughs> <laughs> uh, and 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 shouts to the um to the open mics um shouts to thorough shouts to check it um there's a lot man i know what it's like because i'm forgetting some off the top of the head now but um shouts to shouts to the um to the open mics that 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 goes on in jersey and crazy thing right now that i say open mics because i i did like this ode to um open mics um do you feel that there is a um, misconception of open mics being looked at as a lower tier platform for artists? Uh, in the middle of a panini, yes. But uh, I feel like for the most part, open mics are always going to be what open mics are. And it really just depends on who shows up. Mm. So if you get a crowd that's just like, there because they were you know wanted to go to a club and they was drinking and nine times out of ten they wake up in the next morning and forget about you and aren't going to be a loyal art a loyal fan to your music then what's the point of an open mic night that's and that was the point of a uh, best of essex because once again it was to remind the people of new jersey that we have the power to make whatever's hot hot nobody here is going to win without your chairs you know what i'm saying so um yeah, I, it de- it depends on the kind of people that shows up. Sometimes you might go to open mic that a label head decides to show up at. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just right. luck. Yeah. I mean, some of the illest bonds and vibes come from open mics. Like local, but most of the time local based. You know what I'm saying? It create yeah. it create a, a great local movement, but cash money wasn't started out of an open mic. Nobody like there knew each other out of that. Um what no limit wasn't people who were like going to open mics together uh so many different groups i can name that didn't that didn't start that way mm. but i'm not discouraging artists uh, if you want to every artist has to start off locally so if you're looking to build a local fan base do that how how important is um that local support hmm. i feel like uh took me a while to get my local support and I blew up a lot of other places before I blew up in Montclair. So I want to say that it's not that important, but the only reason I'd be saying that is because of uh, bitter resentment. So it is extremely important. And if you get it, hold on to that. You're very lucky. Mm. Do you feel rappers, um, do you think rappers depend on cosigns? Um, some do, but I feel like that's a bad thing to depend on. Cosigns last two seconds. Yeah. So a cosign is not important to you. Uh, it, it is, it is important. It's helpful, but I, I don't depend on it. Hmm. One of, one of, that's one of the bars I said in a good night. I said, um, I don't think you understand. I can never start myself depending on another man. I could be broke one day. You're on the other hand, this or your rock star. I'm going to make another band. So yeah, that's how I feel. <laughs> Word. And who are some of your biggest supporters? Um, definitely this this girl, uh, Sid. She just made this uh fan page, totally out the blue. I, I didn't know her prior to this. Uh, she's just this seventeen year old sweetheart that loves my music and I just want to, if you're seeing this, I truly appreciate you for creating that fan page. I don't care how much support it gets. You are one of my number one supporters. Thank you very much. Also shout out to my boy, Benin, this uh, 14 year old kid who put together this discord. So all of my fans can meet up and like, he's a freaking genius. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you. Intensify charts. Uh, It's this YouTube page or a guy, it's the guy behind the YouTube page that I'm really thankful for because without him, I would have never heard of crypt. Uh, I wouldn't have done the popping cipher, uh, the popper popping challenge, and ended up in the popping cipher. And he just pushed me in the right direction a lot of times. So yeah, and thank God, this is I'm not winning an award. Why am I talking like this? No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, man, you better practice. Get out of here. <laughs> nah, it's, it's all perfect, good, baby. <laughs> nah, it's all good. That's that's dope, man. Um, and just hearing that, right? Like, 
with other successful independent artists, um, Russ, Snow the Product, Ari the Rugged Man, Tech Nine, you know, like, how do you feel? Like, do, do you ever look at anything that goes on for them? It's like, damn, yo, like, I can't believe, like, like this is in a way this is happening for me. Um, I think I'd have to ha- I'd have to meet each and every one of those people and have that conversation with them to truly understand their stories. That's what I'm honestly looking forward to. There, there's certain people where it's like meeting them and talking to them could be a great clout coin, but the more interesting thing for me is being able to connect and relate and have those conversations that's going to make my next moves my best move. Say that. Word and um <laughs> that was fluff. <laughs> Word, you better put that in your next song. <laughs> <laughs> um like when I when I hear when I hear your your skills it's like yo like you didn't you didn't want to be like on rhythm and flow like you didn't I signed up for rhythm and flow. Oh, he did. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Mm. <laughs> I remember. Season, season one. Uh, no, I signed up for season one and two and never got any kind of callback or anything. Mm. No, I signed up for season two as well. I think I think COVID played a big part in that that part. Maybe, but I ain't. I don't stress over that. I, I got friends that's been on uh, on those things and it seems like it's kind of a bittersweet thing everybody knows you and then it slows down and Mm. it seems like it's easy to like get into a depressive state when you see the numbers that you're getting on social medias don't connect as much through the music and stuff like that so I whatever God got from my path I'll take that I don't care if it's homelessness whatever it takes to get to where I'm going I'm I just got to try my best to be fine with that and persevere amen word um samad as we get closer to the end of this um what's next for samad savage an album duo liddy probably coming out like mid-march can i get a hoodie thank you <laughs> <laughs> which which one what uh i have like a lot just go on my website pick something out and i'll make sure you get one okay cool i got you what was the thought process for this new album um, to just show many different parts of me. That was the basic thing. Any features? Can I just say, I'm sorry. I just have to say this. Like I've, I've seen the growth from like, let's say you're, uh, there was a mix, a remix that you made with, uh, Travis Scott. I can't, well, of a Travis Scott song that I don't recall the name of it. Goosebumps. Yeah, from like watching you from that time frame until now, like your cartoons, putting your cartoons together, your videos together, like everything is just so amazing just to see the growth in you and just knowing like that you did all this on your own. Like there was nobody helped you. Like you definitely did. Like when you did the cartoon, remember I DM'd you, I'm like, dude, how the hell did you do a cartoon? And he said, you know, I, I, you know, sometimes you got to do things on your own. And, you know, that definitely resonated a lot. Uh, But I definitely, definitely have to say that I commend you now that we're getting to the end um, because I've seen your growth and it's definitely a beautiful thing. Um, I myself have learned from it. um, And um, I definitely, definitely, definitely commend you. And I wish you nothing but the best and best and keep walking by faith and not by sight because I see it. You know, always know that it's all love all the time and hurry up and finish the album be waiting <laughs> <laughs> yeah ladies and gentlemen he's the one that does, produced a uh, smile that's on youtube that's a Jomi Lowe's track um, great record yeah and uh he produced the other one too. he produced all my stuff y'all and i still got two more beats and he's you know we doing this we doing this but i just wanted to say that yo you you definitely definitely are an inspiration our motivation and just Keep, keep going. Don't stop. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you guys for letting me uh, hop on your platform and be able to speak about what I, we spoke about today. No, definitely. Definitely, man. But um, final question. When it's all said and done, at the end of the day, 
what would you want people to take away from the amount of work you put in? That you can literally do absolutely anything if God wills it. There's absolutely nothing you cannot do if God wills it. And at the same time, you could want something really, really bad. God always answers. He just says no sometimes. Very true. Mm -hmm. Yo, Samad, I want to thank you for joining us tonight for a dope ass discussion. Um, you are a dope ass artist. Your pen is you write with a lightning bolt. You are a skilled MC and I salute you. Um, the floor is yours. Promote any and everything you want to promote. Album coming soon. Uh, and it's just no matter what you think this album can be, there is no possible way in the world you can expect what this album will be. And just, I don't even want to say give it a chance. You're missing out if you don't bump this album. It's just some of my greatest work, in my opinion. And I just, I, I, but I do hope at the, at the same time, I hope y'all appreciate it. So please go check it out. <laughs> yes. and, and that's, and that's that. I want to thank everybody um, for tuning in, whether you're a new um, viewer or a uh, returning supporter. Thank you so much. Once again, I go by the name of Ray Pearson. I go by the name of Jomi Lowe's. And I go by the name of Samar Savage. Screw with it. Yeah. You, guys, you guys are tuned in to Quarantine and Rap. Salute. Let's go. Yeah. 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 Ladies and gentlemen. All over the world, welcome. My name is Ray Pearson. Thank you all for tuning in tonight. Grab your drinks, grab your popcorn, get your notebooks. This is Quarantine and Rap. Yeah, live from your mobile phone, yeah. TV, your PC. I'm on whatever screen you own Jumping from tabs to apps I suggest you don't I promise you'll miss out <laughs> On information that is vital What I do is feature guests I'm even call them the best So I'm going viral with idols It's so classic Like a set of CDs and vinyls You already know it's time for my show Right